What's up, everyone? 我是麦克老师。现在我们来听一听王思聪的英语怎么样。It's really a way of escaping from the mundane life, the day-to-day -day life of really just school and home and, and just studying all the time. 好，我辞职了。王思聪是你的新英语老师。Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in any of my English courses, you can check out the information below. So Wang Sisong has been in the news a bit lately. I see. Somehow he's in a bit of money trouble. Whatever. I hope it all works out for you, Sisong. Anyway, today we're gonna let Sisong be our English teacher. So it says here he studied in England for high school. Funny story. My、uh, good friend went to the same school he did. They were classmates. They hang out. Sometimes on his yacht, so I'm basically like best friends with Sitsong. <sighs> Not really. My life is so pathetic. <laughs> Wang Sitsong, if you're watching, let's hang out sometime. As you'd expect, the son of the richest man in China got a very good education. But was he a good student? Let's have a look. I'm in the school hall, the students are so bad. So I can't get a good education. Go to the school. 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 那谁家用英语这么说，就是 slacker. Wang Sisong was a slacker in high school, apparently. But just remember, even though he had a good education, he still had to learn English as a second language. Learning any language as a second language is not easy. Very happy to know that Wang Sisong is a big believer in language learning. We can see this clearly from his online feud with Hua, 叫什么 Hua Tianfang. Earlier this year, what did he say? 对着大多数中国人来说，英语都是一件废物技能。Oh, 我要哭了。Really, a garbage skill? 有点太夸张了吧？那王思聪反对了，跟他回答：九零幺二年了，还有没出国过的？傻掉。这个也有点太夸张了。But that was a, a huge burn. Look, not everybody wants to travel outside the country, and that's okay. There's Plenty of great places to see in China, but there are also many, many people who do want to travel outside of China. Millions of Chinese people travel outside every year, and since English is the most widely used language outside of China, it makes sense to study English. Pretty simple. Garbage skill? No, not at all. But everyone's an idiot for not going outside China. That's also a little too harsh. But I'm glad to see Sitsong feel so strongly about learning language. And defending English, so thank you, Sitsong. All right, let's see what English Sitsong can teach us today. Tried really hard to find clips of him speaking English. This is the only one I could find, which is a BBC interview. So let's check out and see what his vocabulary is like. Hello. Hello. Ni hao. Ni hao. Good evening. I'm Billy. Lovely to meet you. Please come in. Thanks so much. Those are cool shoes. Yep, thank you. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, even though he's only spoken a few words, I can tell a few things about his English level. First, he speaks British English. Obviously, he went to school there. Second thing is, he said "yup," which is a very native way to say yes. Conversely, for no, you can say "nope." But this is something I very seldom hear. Non-native speakers say, "Yep, nope." Let's continue. Do you think that part of the reason gaming is so popular here is because people kind of actually enjoy、uh, living in the the fantasy worlds that they explore、uh, in the games? It's really a way of escaping from the mundane life, the day-to-day -day life of really just school and home and, and just studying all the time. So even in his first sentence, he's using. Really high-level vocabulary like mundane life, which is another way to say the simple life or day-to-day、uh, -day life, as he continues to say. From the mundane life, the day-to-day -day life. Mundane is a little more negative, like you wouldn't want that life. But I prefer the simple life, the day-to-day -day life. But honestly, just hearing this one sentence, I can tell he's completely fluent. Not quite native level. But very, very close. I mean, so far, zero grammar mistakes and high-level vocab. Pretty impressive. The laws are not very explicit. Here's another very high-level word: explicit. For example, I'm going to be more explicit when I talk to you. If your ideals are not mainstream, then you're wrong. But 
Of course, everyone has their own ideas. Okay, another great word he uses here, mainstream. For example, video games have become much more mainstream since the invention of smartphones. Where the line is, is really quite questionable. We don't really know where the line is. Another very high level phrase, the line. What is the line? He's talking about limits. For example, you can say, we don't know where the limits are. We don't know where the line is. Same meaning. Overall, it's clear he has a massive vocabulary and he knows how to use it. How about his pronunciation? Those are cool shoes. Yep, thank you. This is a nice, a nice flat. Thank you. Well, I think escaping the system would be suicide. Okay, so first thing, his THs are spot on. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Well, I think it's... I've talked about this many times before, so I won't say it again. But now you know it is possible to learn this yin biao, so jiao. Um, first of all, your parents would probably kill you. So he says, probably. Your parents would probably kill you. Now, in true authentic English, you should say probably. One, two, three syllables. But in native oral English, he says it perfect. He says, Two syllables. Probably, probably. Probably. Again, native speakers of any language are usually lazy like me, and sometimes we just skip syllables. Another thing I noticed about his English is his exceptional grammar. Let's have a look. Well, I think escaping the system would be suicide. Okay, his verb tenses are perfect. Verb tenses are probably the hardest part of learning English, but they are no problem for him. Would be, we use would as the past of will to describe past beliefs about the future. When you just school and home and, and just studying all the time. And just studying all the time, instead of study all the time. He knows exactly when to add ing to verbs to make them continuous. Perfect. But of course. Everyone has their own ideas, so what they do is they put on a mask and they go forward in life with the mask. So this is the only tiny grammar mistake I heard in the entire interview. It's a common one which is forgetting articles such as a, uh, an, or the. And they go forward in life with the mask. In this case, he forgot to say a uh, mask. No big deal, really. So we usually use a uh, before a singular noun that begins with a consonant sound. Mask is singular, M is consonant, a uh, mask. And also the identity is not known. Like, whose mask is it? Just a mask. Why is online gaming becoming so popular in China? Because once you go online, you can take off that mask. So here he remembers the article, the, and does it perfectly. You can take off that mask. Now he's talking about a specific identity, which is you, you can take off the mask. He changed the subject from someone unknown to someone specific, you. It's a really small thing in English, but he got it perfect the second time, so well done, Sutong. Another thing that tells you he's a very high level English speaker is his use of hyperbole. Let's check it out. Well, I think escaping the system would be suicide. Suicide? Really? No, of course not. He's using the word suicide to emphasize what he's saying, not the literal meaning. Um, first of all, your parents will probably kill you. Parents will kill you? Of course not literally. He's using hyperbole to draw attention to certain points of his speech. He also uses a very interesting analogy with the mask. Let's have a look. Why is online gaming becoming so popular in China? Because once you go online, you can take off that mask. So like hyperbole, are people wearing Real masks? No, of course not. He's using the mask as an analogy to explain himself more clearly. It's a great example of how to paint a picture in your mind. See, there I did it again. Did I really paint a picture in your mind? No, but the explanation is now more clear and easier to remember. So overall, his English is quite amazing. I was very impressed. A little work on the pronunciation and he would be native level speaker for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know who you want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you can check out my video courses below. Washer, Michael Washer, and uh, Wang Sisong, call me. Zaijian. <laughs>